thing, a nice thing for the employees, new thing. Mm -hmm. It's good. Support yeah, it. Very good. Yes. Anyway, um, we are planning to have it mid July again. It's going to be the same same type of setup. Uh, we will have, and I would strongly encourage anybody that need. Again, it's not a it's not a full blown physical, but they do some biometric screening that is pretty pretty important and very non invasive. And uh, we're going to schedule that again. Last year, we only had 19 employees take advantage of that. A lot of employees say, "Well, look, you know, I can go to my doctor and get a full physical." But um, anyway, so as we get this thing kicked off, we'll send out the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can somebody take that down? Thank you. And is there any way to black it out? We're working on it. Good. Okay, now we're moving on to new business. new business, which is the request to designate a passenger loading, unloading, and parking area for horse-drawn carriage. We've had an application. Yes, for the record, Terry Tubb, zoning official, we did receive an application for a horse and carriage to uh, run basically the uh, historic district and the downtown areas where she would like to operate. She was planning on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings, 3 to 10. Uh, that's her start, jump off point at any rate. On those days, it would be very difficult to park a horse and carriage in the downtown area, parallel park it. So uh, we just thought there was a need to designate an area uh, that, that would be specific that she could use. Um, she has to observe the one-way street, use signalized uh, intersections for uh, 41. Uh, she would, what she's proposed at this point would only to be to cross 41 southbound. She's not going over to the east side at this point, um, but it's mostly for the downtown businesses. I think it sounds good. Mm -hmm. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. it. All that work we did paying off finally. Yeah. <laughs> Be good fun. good okay. solution. Good yes. solution. Thank you. Hopefully she's successful. Yeah. Okay, now recommendation from city officers. Howard. Uh, the question, we had a question from the audience, where is this located? It's on Taylor uh, by Coldwell Banker near the corner of Marion on the uh, <laughs> west. Mitchell, can you flip west the West side of Taylor. There? Okay, so it, it's across from Jack's, where Coldwell Banker is, and it's where you see those cars are parked, that red line, right there. She does. We have, it's all in the ordinance that we worked on. Yeah, we okay. have all the regulations in place for her. Um, I have three items. Uh, first, the budget conversations begin next week, next Wednesday, 6.30. First one will be at the PGI uh, Civic Association, and that's what they are. We're not there to present anything. <coughs> We're there to listen and to converse. Um, uh, we'll see if we can just, hopefully with the people there, we can always bring up sanitation as part of the conversation somehow, but we're not there to push anything on anybody. Okay. That's, not what, we're, that's mm -hmm. not what we're trying to do. Um, I talked with the uh, county administrator this morning regarding the South County overlay, and um, they are trying to get a workshop scheduled. I don't have the date yet. So, I don't Joint have. workshop or what kind of workshop? I don't know. He okay. said workshop. <laughs> oh, workshop. He okay. said workshop. Workshop okay. for us okay. or workshop for the people? Don't know. I think it's mainly for the county commissioners, okay. at least. Oh, all right. Because they're okay. the ones that are going to have to mm -hmm. say yay or nay. I mean, okay. we've been saying yay. <laughs> we need to get a yay over there. Okay. Um, I also talked to the uh, to, to Ray Sandraka regarding uh, what's been happening with the water releases from the Caloosahatchee to the Caloosahatchee from Lake Okeechobee and the fact that uh, a lot of mayors on the coastal communities 
have uh, started some action, and I know there's a lot of things going on. It really hasn't affected Charlotte County yet. It may not. It may not have any effect on Charlotte County, fortunately. Um, but I asked uh, where, if anything, the county is doing. What if the county is doing anything proactive? Have they been asked to do anything? The answer is no, they really haven't been asked. One of the commissioners sits on a, a group of uh, other elected officials regarding water management um, in the whole area between uh, uh, Okeechobee and all the way up here and down Lee and Collier County. But they haven't officially been asked to do anything. Uh, we had a request or an email from the Punta Gorda Chamber asking that we may want to get involved. Um, you want to take over? Yeah, um, I think at this point it's an informational gathering mm -hmm. for us. Uh, we're not directly affected. I will be at the Southwest Florida League of Cities meeting tomorrow where we will talk about it. I know Sanibel's heavily affected and involved and um, get a sense from them on, you know, what the, if there is a call to action for us or, you know, what kind of support they would want. Um, I think that's where we should leave it for now. I just want to say, I think uh, what John's concern was is with all the publicity that's happening nationally that it could impact uh, people coming to Punta Gorda just because they're going to put us in with, you know, Southwest Florida. And I think that's the reason that John would like us to get involved. Not because and I think he's been in touch with the, with the Tourism Bureau. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, you know, the Lee and Collier Tourism Bureau, I think that's probably the direction that, that the, you know, the tack that we should take is let them handle it because they really are the experts in dealing with that type of thing. Nancy? Um, also, um, Gary sits on the, the uh, Regional Planning Council. Yes, I right. know they have a water committee. Uh, yes. At least they were talked about it. Yes. And that may be another area to gather uh, information. I in. suspect that's going to be on the agenda next week. Yeah. Yeah. As well as the um, it could topic could come up with uh, Charlotte Harbor National Estuary mm -hmm. program meetings as well. Yes. Is that fine? Okay. That's all I got. Yep. All right. Good. City Attorney. Um, going back to the solid waste, the sanitation, years ago I was involved in negotiating some contracts on behalf of a number of um, local governments uh, with um, outside um, sanitation delivery services. And, and I'm sure Howard and Rick know this, but I just mentioned for whatever it's worth, when you look at the costs, those, those rates that we saw on that sheet, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's some variables you need to pay attention to. Um, sometimes the, um, the actual cost of the pickup of the solid waste is reduced if they are able to do the recycling. And so it's a, sort of a loss leader on the one side, but you pay for it on the recycling. And some of the jurisdictions own their own landfills. And so the cost of the landfill tipping fee doesn't necessarily reflect in the, um, in the rates themselves. So, you got to do apples to apples to be able to see what's really the best fit for the city. Thank you. So you're saying, for instance, Venice may own their own landfill, so that fee is not in there. Possibly. Okay. Possibly. Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. City Clerk? Yes, we have two vacancies to announce. Uh, a continued vacancy on the General Employees Pension Board and a Code Enforcement Board alternate. Um, as far as appointments, uh, we have um, both Burt Store Isles. We'll do Burt Store Isles first of all. Here's voting forms. Um, Mr. Larry Brewster's term has expired, and we have Mr. Sh uh, Sean Harrigan, Mark Long, and Jack Pryor interested in serving on Burt Store Isles. And I would just like to publicly thank Gary Brewster because he served. The allowed number of terms. Yes. Oh, thank oh, you. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yes, that's great. He's done a very admirable job yes, of guiding has, has. the team. Yes, he has. Okay. 
and the appointee is Mr. Pryor. Okay, next we do have uh, an appointment for Contra Gorda Isles Canal Advisory Committee. With interested parties is Carol Geiger, Frederick Court, and Dennis O'Brien. And the appointee is Carol Geiger. That's it? That's it. Thank you. Okay, policy, okay. yes? When is the next meeting of the General Employees Pension Fund? That is March 10th. Okay. And we will likely not have uh, a complete board. We have uh, uh, currently four members um, on the board that I'm sure that they can. Okay. Under policy and legislation, um, I don't have anything. Under mayor, council member comments, Kim. Um, just want to let everyone know tonight is uh, we have a meeting uh, about the CDBG funds over at Cooper Street at 6:30. Also, we're having our kickoff meeting for Facelift 41 tonight at the Beach Complex, and that's at 5:30. So I'm going to try to make it to to both of those, depending on how that goes. Um, wanted to thank the police department. On Monday, we had ice cream at Cooper Street, and they had a whole cleanup over there. Um, Chief uh, Lewis got the uh, prisoners to go over and clean that up. It's all cleaned up. The kids were out there playing basketball with the sheriff and, and our officers, and it was really wonderful. Um, and just a note about Retta, you can see all the neighborhood people that are here. And now we're going to add a, a horse-drawn carriage there. I still want to throw out there that we might want to think about making that one way at some point. I just think that even for the neighbors, the people who live in the neighborhood and the people who are enjoying the park, it would be, it would be good for everybody there it, because when you get – some Sunday afternoon, come and sit on my porch. And what happens is people are driving down there very quickly. And people who are lollygagging, as my grandmother would say, um, just looking at the water and enjoying the view, you have angry people behind them, laying on their horn, trying to get around them, and being really annoyed that people are enjoying the water. So just throwing it out there. That's it. Tom? <laughs> yeah, I would like to see uh, us include that on, in the traffic com common component as we relook at, at the park again, if we are agreeable to do that. I'm one that believes that we should be looking at traffic common throughout the whole city. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're appropriate. Okay. I would just like to make sure, though, that if we look at one way, mm -hmm. we have you know, the design yes. shows everything going west. <laughs> that makes it impossible to get to the um, uh, waterfront Western. hotel. Well, I so I think have we have to look at, there. we have to look at just what are we. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the only other conflict I would say is that Marion is one way going west too. So in, mm -hmm. in order to get back going east, you'd have to go one, two, you'd have to go up to I'm Olympia. Not, well, I'm not sure it shouldn't be east. Also, oh, the other way? Okay. I would uh, also say that in some instances, urban planning, they really have been encouraging getting rid of one way streets and going to two way so that the new urbanism really talks about two way and then traffic calming measures. So, um, and in, in a lot of towns, they really 
gotten rid of the downtown where there's it's the the one-way streets um, and uh, unfortunately we have highways going through so we have a different well, situation you, but I think Mitchell could probably when address you, it when you're down him. there and you heard a couple of the citizens talk what happens is and now the water is going or the walkway is going to be at the water a lot of people walk right on the grass along there so now you're going to have parking there you have people backing out there I mean, you're creating a, really a waterfront type of situation there, which is wonderful. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody is opposed to that. But then you add the two-way traffic and people trying to get around each other. It's, you have to sit and watch. It's really quite sometimes amusing and sometimes scary. And, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's very, very busy. It it's may mean very busy. But it may mean we need a really slow speed zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because our parking won't work if it's going east. Well, right. I mean, it's in I, I don't know what it would parking. be. I mean, they would have to. Mm -hmm. um, when, when are we going to talk about that again? Retta? Yeah. I mean, we <laughs> this is the first time. We had. Well, yeah, I mean, we, and this isn't a time to really no, have it. Yeah. I just threw it out there for. A, we approved the plans for. <laughs> yeah, we right. did. No, no. We kind I'm of approved just, the parking and the. I mean, right. we can bring it up again later, but. I was not planning to bring it back right away. Okay. okay. Right. I'm okay with that. <laughs> right. I think the traffic calming is going to be sufficient. At least we can try that and sure. then see. Sure. Okay. I mean, you could always angle the parking the other way. Oh, now we're redesigning again. No, right no. Right? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> if it was something you were going to think about doing, you know, you want to think about which way. And I don't know which way that would be. I mean, I just know that you want to get to 41. So going east would be logically to me. But. Okay. That's it for me. Tom? Yes. Uh, I had an opportunity to meet with the Punagoda Isles uh, Civic Association Board of Directors, and we talked about security cameras, similar to what uh, BSI is, is doing. And they've agreed to uh, set up a committee to investigate it, and uh, it was attended by Chief Lewis and uh, Lieutenant Heck. And, uh, they're moving ahead with uh, looking into it. Um, also, I guess, you know, we're, we're all aware that we've had an application for another used car lot in the downtown area. Um, I wonder if we've ever looked into, or council has ever looked into uh, limiting uh, prolifer proliferation of a specific type of business in, in the downtown area. When is enough enough? Have we ever looked into something like that? On the number? On the, on the type of... Uh, the, uh, we have restricted certain types of uses in various zoning districts. Okay. This is a highway commercial district, mm -hmm. and, um, and that's where we, that's where auto things are located. <coughs> so uh, we have not specifically looked into whether or not you can only have 10 as opposed to 15 or and we haven't done that I, I we just have no we have not okay private land can you even I mean this is private property you know it's like I mean people say well how many auto parts stores do you really need but it's you know free enterprise yeah we have I mean as much as you may people may comment do we need another one mm -hmm. um, but you know, do we need another restaurant? But people keep opening restaurants. Any other comments? No. Yeah. Gary? <clears throat> I just uh, would like to say, since my wife is one of the members, that the uh, Citizen Academy is really a big hit with a lot of the, a lot of the people that are attending. And I want to thank all the staff that are participating, have participated in this present Citizen Academy. I want to thank them. I want to thank. Uh, everybody on this uh, console for being reasonable and open-minded people it's really a pleasure and it's fun even though we kind of make a few jokes and i also want to thank howard for his uh, musical rendition to open up our don't meeting thank it was him greatly for that. appreciated please. <laughs> please don't thank him for that <laughs> anyway that's all i have to say. thank you Nancy? um yeah just one thing um i think it was a great discussion this morning about the uh, gilchrist park and um after in our break um one of the uh, women that came, that had commented, came up to me. She was actually in, almost in tears about the the noise issue. And another person made a comment to me, suggesting, is it possible to consider 
um, some of the area that we where we were considering moving the Peace River Wildlife Center um, into the, where the um, across from say the, the Visual Arts Center and uh, over where the Public Works facility was. Is there space there to consider moving pickleball into that area where it might not be as close and we also have to look at, at noise limitations as well because that would still be in a close proximity to a neighborhood but where we could actually have more of a pickleball <coughs> complex so to speak um not there that's in a other? real neighborhood it just that was just a comment i'm okay. just throwing that out thank and you that was i'm just communicating what has been passed along to me since we're in, right. since i can so you'd be surprised how far that sound carries oh can you hear it howard pickleball yeah no no Okay. Mm. I can hear it at my mom's house. We hear the nice music. Right. But yeah. not, not the <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, Nancy? No. Okay, Thank now you. it is citizens' comments. If you would like to comment on any subject matter, please come to the podium, state your name. You have three minutes. Uh, Jay Buckley, Panagorda. Uh, I just wanted to make mention, uh, I think uh, a plaque while you're doing this should certainly go to Murray Thornycraft. He's going through some tough times, and of course, that's what's created that vacancy on the canal advisory. I don't know whether I'm the only non-techie in this city or not, but I don't know. I don't use Facebook. Like, some people live by it, but I would suggest that you also have your recommendations to the city manager on the website. I mean, some I know the kids and everybody, they live by Facebook. And uh, I agree with Kim on the one way on Rutta Esplanade for a couple reasons. Thinking down the road, you know, we're going to have a waterfront activity center in that area, which is going to be another traffic problem. And uh, I would encourage then you guys to decide which way you want it to go, but it certainly should be one way in the direction of the diagonal parking, not opposed to it. Because I've, <laughs> okay. I've seen some bad accidents <laughs> that way. Thank you. <laughs> I am blonde. <laughs> I would just like to comment that our Facebook question is always in the weekly report, and anybody that receives that by email is more than welcome to respond to any one of us through email on the Facebook question because it is in the weekly every week. Correct? Yes, the Facebook is one tool of many, and uh, we get a lot of emails directly from people, and we encourage that. Yes. We'll, we'll emphasize that again. Yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm Donna Snyder, and I live in Punta Gorda. My concern has been for quite a while that most of the big axle trucks and the big tonnage trucks and even 18-wheelers have kind of been passing around to each other that Gill Street is a wonderful uh, shortcut to delivery trucks, concrete trucks, dump trucks from Williams all the way down to Marion if they're going out to Punta Gorda Isles. And I'm concerned, since we're on part of the Brick Street, which I don't believe the bricks were ever put down there thinking that 40,000 pounds plus five axle trucks would ever drive down them. But I know even five years ago, Gill Street, the brick part of it was fairly flat, not a lot of dimples. But that's not the case anymore. And I know there are signs that can be put where it limits tonnage or it limits um, axle size to particular streets. And the 18-wheelers that are coming south on 41, they can turn on Williams and they can avoid <coughs> three or maybe three or four red lights if they're making deliveries down at Fisherman's Village. So they just come right down the middle of the residential area onto the old brick streets. And we have a lot of children on Gill Street, particularly in the afternoon. And that is kind of a concern to me. And I have a front row seat. So that's all I want to say. The signs, I don't know how expensive they are. But, the, you know, if these trucks want to come down, turn on Williams off of 41 and come down Gill, they can come as far as Virginia on an asphalt street, then turn and go west on Virginia, down to Shreve, and still turn and be on asphalt, and they can avoid the brick streets. So that's my, that's what I wanted to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Actually, that, uh, that occurs on uh, Durance, it occurs on Gilchrist, it does. They, 
it, 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 it occurs. Can we put that on? Can we talk about that? Ray Rose again, once more. Uh, going back to add to what David said about the uh, refuse fees, not only do you have to consider who owns their own dumps, but also what service you get without the add-ons. It's kind of a case like, do you fly Southwest or do you fly Allegiant? One is all inclusive and the other one is every special activity carries a fee along with it. So please be sure they're all inclusive pricing. Our garbage service here is fantastic. Thank you, Ray. Um, Shelley Yeager, one more time. I live on Red Esplanade and and uh, as someone who lives there and works outdoors a lot, I can tell you that right now there are a lot of people that drive down there that think it's one way. And, and we see that at least once or twice a week. And if you put the angled in parking in there, I think that misconception is going to become uh, even more prevalent. So it's something to consider when you make your decision that already there's a misunderstanding and the angled in parking will increase that misunderstanding. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Citizens' comments on any topic? Seeing none, we are adjourned. <laughs>